Hello and welcome back to day two of our remedials work on this flat that's going to be rented out. Today's job is to change this bad boy over to a new um, 18th edition board with SPD protection. It's going to be a fun day I think. Let me turn my camera around and I'll show you a few of the issues I think we're going to have. Okay, let's put that in there. As you can see, this sits inside. This is all, this can all come out, but I've got this here that sits out and I've got one over this side that sits out. And my board literally just, and I mean just, fits in there. So I'm hoping that I can sit it onto these, maybe even fix to that, or if not the sides. Um, <clears throat> so, cause all the cables come up here, so I need to really cover that. So uh, my next job is to turn the power off, take all this out, and then start looking into um, how my ball's gonna fit in there. Plus also what I've found, normally these balls would sit on an external wall um, so that behind this would sit another wall effectively. So it'd be inside the cavity, all of this, and then this part of the board would normally sit against the external wall so I can fix to it. But here it's in a cupboard. So as you can see, I've literally got the thickness of this. So if I need to fix to the back of the board, it's gonna cause me issues. That's why I'm hoping I can fix to the sides so that it takes all that issue away. I can drill then into this, but I won't know until I start working on it. So I suppose the next thing is just to crack on and get this show on the road. I'll see you guys in a minute. share how far we've got so far what we've managed to do obviously is strip out all of the old board we've taken this was right in the way it was like a shelf it obviously it stopped people putting their hands up inside the board but we've ripped that out so we don't need it there um then i've had to cut these back because the fuse board was just too big to slide in there so we've cut or well, i've cut these back so then it's roughly the same distance off the wall as this and I've just tried the board in there to make sure it fits. Uh, next job will be to temporarily fix it to this with the knockout out the back to get all the cables in place just temporarily then I need to drill through the back of this um, to then put some bolts through and get it secured properly and then we'll see how we look once that's done. So let's get that done shall we? show you why we've done this part we're very very limited to space in here so everything I've been doing so far has all been to do with not only getting the board in here but making sure that 
flap actually opens. So I got to the stage of fixing the box to the wall and I thought my next stage before I put all the breakers in would be to make sure you can actually open the door because the worst thing would be if I'd finished the board and then this got caught on any of the doors then I'd be back to square one. So I thought, thought I'd better show you why I'll put this on now rather than wait until the end of the job to put it on. I hope um, that's helped someone out somewhere. back and this is how far that we've managed to get so far um, as you can see the board is now fixed to inside the cupboard I've put the RCBOs in um, that we need as you can see there's not many circuits these circuits at the back here are old redundant circuits but like this is up in the loft sitting up there it's a shower supply so at any point it could potentially be reinstalled um, nothing to stop it from being put into an RCBO so if they ever change their mind and want to reuse that cable, I've left it in here. And the same thing with the cooker supply, albeit the cooker supply has been hidden. So as you can see, there's no actual cooker switch, so that could be anywhere. So the chances of that getting put back in is quite slim. But I'll try to leave them, if I can, into the ball, so at least they've got a cable there if they want to use it. Um, and as you can see, if I go up close to these, I always tend to fit Hager anyway. But if you look... Um, on here, that little tiny circuit picture there, it's got a couple of squiggly lines and one that looks like road bumps. That actually tells you that that's a type A RCD, which is different to a type AC RCDs, which now basically are um, redundant. They're no good for modern circuitry, anything with electronics in. I personally have been fitting type A are RCBOs with SPD protection for the last over two years. Um, and most people have just not been doing that because of the cost that's involved with putting these boards in. But um, all of my customers for the last two years, without knowing it, are actually still up to date with the regs because I've been fitting stuff that wasn't necessarily had to fit but i always fitted it because i knew where the or i had a strong suspicion of where the regulations were going to go in the new amendment which they did do so i've actually done my um customers a bit of a favor there i think without them even knowing it uh, and anybody that doesn't already know the difference between an rcbo and an rcd is simply that this is a RCD with an MCB or a miniature circuit breaker all in one unit. So instead of you having what we used to do is have a main switch, then an RCD and then all of your circuits, then another RCD and then other circuits, which we would call a split load board. Now we've moved over to doing full RCBO boards um, because you get a lot less nuisance tripping and also another reg that states that one circuit having a fault should not affect another circuit within the system so having these individually rcd protected means that if you have a problem with one circuit it only affects that one circuit so they're far far better they are definitely a lot better <clears throat> okay so um that's it for this part i will endeavour to show you where we're going next. I've got a bit of testing to do um, and then we'll start putting the circuits away. share with you um, as I'm in the cupboard currently upgrading the earthing 
to the water and the gas mains, I thought I'd show you how I do my um, earth clamps. Because <coughs> not everybody would know how they would actually go onto a pipe and how you connect them in. So um, if you're willing to stay with me for a couple of minutes, I'll show you how I do mine. <coughs> So, this is how they would normally come in a packet. So I would take this off, because that's actually quite important, as your warning notice to say, don't know if that's gonna come up. It's a safety electrical connection, do not remove. So that has to stay on it. And what you then do is take that out, put that through the ready-made hole, and then do it up. So what I generally do, if you can see through there, that little gap, you don't want this to be screwed right in so that you can't see through the gap. So you wanna leave that open. And then, if you run, because that's quite straight, you want this to go round the pipe. So to aid it, you just run your thumb down it and it automatically twists it a little bit. <coughs> so then, Put it round the pipe, put it through the gap, and put it tight onto the pipe. And if you then bend that back on itself, as the screw goes down, it then tightens the band here, it tightens it up to the pipe. So let's do that. good and solid. The next step is we need to connect this earth cable around this bolt somehow. So the easiest way of doing that is via a crimp. So <clears throat> you measure this cable off roughly how long we need it. Cut it to limp. Strip the end. And then we put the crimp on. See if it's the right sort of depth. <coughs> so, if you look on the end there, there's a little hole. So that is so you can see how far the cable's gone in. So what you want is, you can see the cable up there, but you don't want to see any copper this end, if you can get away with it. So when you push it on, that's pretty much what you want, like this. I'll give you a close up of it in a minute. Um, <clears throat> and then we get our crimpers. And on there, we've set it to the right size, 10 mil. And then we put it around the crimp and literally just tighten it up. I'll bring this in, hopefully you'll be able to see. There you go. Nice and neat and a good solid connection. <coughs> what I've left is put it on the clamp.
There you go, good solid connection. And the last thing is, we pull this over to this. I'm gonna quickly tighten it down with the pliers. So this is what we end up with. So that's the finished article, because the idea is that this then is going over the connection. So you actually physically have to try and remove this um, to, in order to get to the connection. That's what we want to try and do. Well, I do hope that's helped someone and someone's actually found that quite interesting. Um, <clears throat> next up will be, I'll show you how far we've got in the um, consumer unit and we'll, because we've pretty much done it now. So um, hopefully <clears throat> you'll find that quite good. Here we are back in the mains and as you can see I've now pulled in uh, the mains tails up here uh, which go into my main switch. You've got the main earth there um, and these are as you can see the new gas and water 10 mil bonds. As you saw I was doing the water, the gas is just in the cupboard behind here. Um, those cables that I just run up there in the existing <clears throat> bit of trunking stuff and go straight into the back of that so all that's left for me to do now now that we've got it all powered up is to do a couple of um live tests make sure the um, zs's are quite uh, all right and that the rcd tests are within parameters and then right up the board make a couple of stickers and we are job done so let's get cracking on with that shall we hello uh, unfortunately, I actually forgot to do a video at the end of the job, typically. Um, one reason was uh, the client wanted to go, he needed to go out somewhere. So I was in a little bit of a rush and I just totally forgot. Um, but as a little final recap, I suppose, the job is all done, everything tested out okay. Um, the client's happy with the work that's been completed. So, yeah, it's all good. Um, and I just thought I'd better end the video with uh, what, um, how it's all ended as such, I suppose. Um, and also to say, obviously, if you like what you are been watching so far on the channel, by all means, please like and subscribe because it does help quite a lot. Um, yeah, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.